with the fifth pick. I can't. Do, I can't <laughs> do the Berman. Trying to go Berman on us? I'm not as good at the it Bills as haven't you picked are. yet. Yeah, <laughs> circled the wagons. Nobody wagon. circles the <laughs> wagons <laughs> <laughs> like the Buffalo Bills. All right, it's not the Bills. What are we doing here? It's the uh, it's the Hebrew Hammers. They're on the clock. The Hebrew. It's hammers. me. I'm on the clock. All right, here we go. So we had to switch up uh, five and six so that Casey and Big Co don't have to pick for their own team. It's the theme we're doing here. we as we're mocking up this uh, home league that we have. Tight end premium, non super flex. Of course. Yeah, because Casey's got the next pick, and then I'm behind him. So, so the Hebrew Hammers, up. you're on the clock, Case. What you got? All right. So, obviously, the running backs are gone here. Yep. Just took um, the last one. I'm going to run through his team real quick. Uh, he's got Cousins and Stafford. And then the running backs is, is where he really needs some help. He's got Peyton Barber and Rojo, which, you know, you got the combo platter, but who the hell knows what that's going to be. He's got Kenyon Drake and Balaj. So, you got. Another combo, combo platter. Got the combo platter there, which, you know, it's, it's all it's all well and good. But other than that, like, not much going on here. He's got Rashard Penny, so you need that to to blossom for you. Elijah McGuire is worthless. He's got Jalen Rashard, so he could maybe squeeze another pick out of the Josh Jacobs owner here. Mm-hmm. Um, but And the receivers are, 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 are solid. He's got Odell. He's got Mike Evans. He's got Galladay. Uh, he's got Calvin Ridley. He's got Lacan Treadwell. Um, Devontae Parker's a stab. Yeah, Parker's like a stab Parker. on there. Moncrief to the to the Steelers, not the worst. Um, and John Ross down there, cheap John Ross. And he's got OJ Howard, so he does have a tight end. This is premium, so you got to start thinking maybe Hawkinson and Fant creep up here for you at, at this pick one five. Uh, but Jay Wayne was just talking about his guy being on the clock and you know not really having too much and maybe trading back. If I'm the Hebrew Hammers, I want to try to go up right here and grab one of these backs if if you know obviously maybe the first three were running backs and it's just harry left at one four but if i'm the ha- if i'm hammers i want to try to get up there and try to work a deal with rva kickers who needs more than just a one one piece and he's in rva kickers just happens to be an eagles fan so maybe if he was on the clock he wouldn't want to trade true and we want to take miles sanders but that's what, a great, uh, what i'm saying is that i want to try to jump back up in here with a team like this to try to get a back that's a great point and if to that point uh, if the first two picks go back, you need to jump into the third pick because you don't know if the third pick's gonna be Harry or the other or the last back. Wait, who? Yeah. <laughs> you don't know Harry. if Harry's gonna be gone. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, I like what you said, Casey, and and to build on that is if if this is your type of team where you got some really good receivers and you got some question mark running backs who could really pop and your your starting lineup would be fine, but you're not going to know that until maybe week three, four, five, six. Might as well try to jump in there. If you're this close, you're at one five. Right. You might as well try to jump in there and make a move and maybe just wait it out and take the last one. Or if you want to play, you know, hardball and go up and get, you know, if you get one, two, then you have a choice. Theoretically, you might not know who's going one, but it's probably going to be Jacobs. You know what I mean? Right. And he has, you know, some parts and pieces here to be able to to maybe potentially negotiate a little bit of a deal to to move up with a with, you know, a player in this pick or something along those lines. All right. Well, for those listening on YouTube, we're we're doing this rookie mock it up. First pick was Josh Jacobs. Second pick was Nikhil Harry. Third pick was David Montgomery. Fourth pick was Miles Sanders. The last back to go off. You right. mentioned needing a back, trying to trade up. We can't do that. Right. You got to so, make the pick. So we're stuck. We're stuck. Who in, you take? We're stuck in purgatory here. <laughs> um, and like I said, he's got OJ Howard. So the so the tight ends, especially in premium, really starting to creep up for me here. I like Fant and I like Hawkinson a, a good bit, just like anybody else. Yep. <laughs> just um, like everybody else out there. <laughs> but how I'm, could you not? I'm gonna just I'm gonna take a swing here for the team that's already loaded at receiver and just try to grab DK Metcalf and load up. Oh, one, yeah. one more potential really good receiver on this team here and then he'd be pretty fluid to do kind of whatever he wants if if dk you know turns into something uh to kaylin zakaris of house metcalf <laughs> so that would be his that would be the game of thrones pick um <laughs> <laughs> for sure yeah but so obviously the seahawks landing spot for for some people with metcalf some people are meh some people are a little excited about it some people are really unexcited about it I don't see it as a terrible landing spot. I got one of the best quarterbacks in the league, and he's locked up for a while. Um, we've seen, oh, he just got paid. Yeah, yeah so maybe know. they want to let him, you know, do more work out there. Well, you got you got another year in the same offense, and maybe you 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 
spice it up a little bit and you get them uh, closer to the 400 attempt range. Um, probably where he should be, but still a good 35 touchdown season and the best interception to TD ratio he's ever had in his career uh, for, ba- or for, for, for Russell Wilson. And, and obviously Doug Baldwin, the loss of Doug Baldwin is big for the team, didn't play a ton last year. But other than that, it's basically Tyler Lockett left on the team who probably will most likely slide into a Doug Baldwin role. I know they drafted the West Virginia uh, player Jennings to maybe potentially hope slide into a slot role but you never know yeah. w- w- what's going to go on there just like you don't really nobody knows what's going to go on with dk it's a house divided it's it's you're either all in or you're completely off not too many people are i'm pretty down the middle on them i'm i'm okay with buying a ticket to the show here um and there, obviously it's coach speak and this and that but the reviews have been awesome oh, I love over these last couple of days don't know I've where that three cone drill came saw from. videos of him running cone drills and doing stuff he looks pretty fluid to me he's huge he's fast you can't jam him because he's going to eat you up and if you give him any cushion he's going to eat that cushion and go past you um so he's, he is pretty hard to guard there's a limited route tree that that is the big issue and the stiffness and the three cone um carol said he didn't see any issue didn't 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 see why there would be an issue with any sort of a route tree we've talked about it when we covered him i, I don't think with a guy like dk you need an extensive route tree you can Calvin Johnson pretty much won on three or four routes. A guy like, not saying he's Calvin Johnson, but a guy like DK can win on three or four routes. He just needs to come across the field, go up the field, and run a comeback and real and a screen here or there. And that's, that's really it. all you need. Like, you don't need this extensive route tree, but they were saying that they didn't think it was going to be an issue. Um, and, you know, I'm, I, I don't love DK, but I also don't hate DK. And at the fifth pick here, I'll, I'll, I'll swing for the fences on you know, one of the bigger freak athletes we've seen in a while. Um, some people will hate the pick and some people will love the pick. It's just how DK goes. What do you guys think? Oh, one more thing. Like basically the, the, what I see here is, is worst case scenario is you, you had David Moore there last year. Um, I, I don't see, obviously you don't want if David Moore, you don't want DK to have the David Moore like season, but I could see him being, a a souped up bigger better version of kind of what David Moore did last year even if DK was just like eh we didn't really get what we wanted like he was basically a deep threat guy who had 53 targets caught 26 of them for five touchdowns Um, so you could you could see him in like a David Moore role even if he was like didn't really pan out how they you know kind of pictured DK panning out I think you could be a little souped up version of David Moore kind of right off the rip for him if he needed some some uh, some time to, to figure it out uh, but I think he could come in and be there, be their big time number one, big ticket item, uh, and I think that's kind of what they see as well. They're excited. They traded up to get DK, so why not? Yeah, I, I love this pick. Uh, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty in on DK Metcalf. Like, why not? Why not take this swing? I mean, he's definitely the best against press coverage. You can't jam him, and he's so fast and he's so big. Like, this is going to translate to the NFL, if you ask me. He's gonna get behind defenses. And he's going to score touchdowns. And if he, I think if, if he has the same season as David Moore, it's going to do a lot more for him than it did for Moore because you're going to see him more splashed and, and scored some deep touchdowns. Well, that's that's kind of what I was hearing. He, had, he averaged 17.1 that, yards of reception for right. David Moore. So that's kind of what I, you know. All DK has to do is catch a few long bombs and you're going to be like, oh man, look what that guy can do on an NFL field. And this is why they drafted him. And this is what scores points in the NFL. I, I, I can, I, I get it. Uh, one of the knocks that you didn't mention was was his drops. Had had a lot of drops. Uh, well, seven, but only sixty seven receptions. Uh, his drop rate was one hundred thirty first. So not a good, not a good drop rate. But there's a lot of spectacular catches that go into his tape. And then the fact that he can get behind defenses is is, is enough for me. Uh, and I, if Doug Baldwin, it sounds like he's going to be out of there. I mean, he's definitely not the same player if he does come back. And he's it sounds like it's already a done deal. He's just holding out so he doesn't have to eat the, the yeah. cap money that or the signing bonus. There he's gonna make him fire him versus quitting. Yeah. Smart. Get mm-hmm. you get your money, Doug. All right. Uh but also I'm I'm down if you want to retire and want to take care of your body. I understand that. And that sounds like he's a smart dude. It sounds like he wants to he doesn't need money. He didn't he, he's not and I mean the Seahawks sure good. The Seahawks haven't necessarily had a big outside presence. He's like probably a DK fairly could physically be. responsible, and and my heart is sad right. if, if Dougie walks away. Ah, yeah. no, Super doubt, sad. no doubt, no doubt, no um, doubt. But but it does leave a glaring hole for the Seahawks, right? And, and they're paying Russell so much money, you'd think that they're gonna maybe let him throw it a little bit more. Sure, 
Well, in the rookie drafts, I mentioned it when we were talking about Nikhil Harry versus the... Wait, who? De- <laughs> I just don't know how long I'm going to get to use this. Uh, as it, you know, like a safer asset value at one, two, Nikhil Harry versus if it was my team, I'd take David Montgomery. That's your negotiation all the way through the rookie drafts. I mean, that's really what you look at. I mean, every once in a while, there's a player who's, you know, most of the time it's the, the first pick. Like there's a Saquon Barkley and then there's everybody else type of thing. Um, but once you get past the probable safe top three running backs that have a situation or were drafted into a spot where you think obviously Josh Jacobs first rounder and you know dude just got hurt other people aren't even on the team they just brought back Doug Martin because Crowell got hurt and and what's his name retired Marshawn Lynch once she gets past those types of situations I feel like pick five six seven eight fairly interchangeable what 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 is your spice what you know? How do you? What's your palate? What you tasting? What you feeling like? I don't personally. I can feel it down in my plum. Exactly. What's your plum? What's your plums feeling like? My plums aren't like I'm not. I'm not in love with DK Metcalf. But You're not I can, trading your Twinkie for DJ DK Metcalf plums. I'm, I'm not necessarily trying to get rid of my Twinkie for DK, but I can see everything you just said. The big. One of the things is the holes on the wide receiver core are very obvious for Seattle. Tyler Lockett played great last year and and just what Casey said like and and it wasn't it, in the playoff game when Seattle went down and they lost the game running the ball like everybody was screaming throw the ball you got one of the best quarterbacks in the league you should open him up a little bit more Tyler Lockett was the most efficient long ball catcher in the league last year and some people could take that and run it back the other way and say well it's because they pounded the rock and we made a lot of Casey in particular brought you all the specifics last year coming in actually about this time coming I'll in pretty much nailed that one yeah talking about their <laughs> re, you know the the running game and the way they were going to set it up and all that good stuff I don't know if anybody imagined that they that the Seahawks would let Russell Wilson throw it less than any quarterback in the league and that was a bummer for pe- for fantasy points all around unless you had Chris Carson but I think that this does I think it's a really good pick for Seattle I think it there's plenty of room for popping and being a really good fantasy play. Um, it's not my spice. It's not what I want to put on my plate at one five. So but this I is can, not who you would take here. No, I think there's plenty. I, I mean, I could. I, I think. Save I could, it. Save it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Save it. They just brushed me off the plate with a high heat. Yeah, I could saw, I see you loading you up a name it. there. Yeah. Just save it. No, I could look at the list. I mean, there's. I think you could easily plug in. Obviously, we don't know the future here, so I think you could easily plug in a Paris Campbell, Debo Samuel. Uh, AJ, DK Metcalf is here for a reason. You could plug in TJ Hawkinson. Who knows? You may, be, you may need to be taking Fant over Hawkinson when it's all said and done because Flacco loves tight ends, and that's the way. You, there's so many. There's so many. Who knows what this pick needs to be from pick five on? And there's a there's a actually there's a couple of really good viable options, and it's it's going to take a season. And in Dynasty, it could take three seasons to really tell you what. But I don't mind the DK Metcalf pick. It wouldn't have been my pick, but I, there's all the potential in the world. And it's good. What's interesting is is you know a couple months ago it was he was supposed to be like a top ten pick, and then the Seahawks get him at the end of the second round. So they still got just as much upside as they ever had. And they had to put in a lot less into him to give it a ride, to give it a shot and see if it works. And now, if you want to be on pro side of DK, my man's on every commercial now from that ESPN shot of him crying on the phone saying, why y'all wait too long, so long to take me? If oh, that's the, what did it for me. You know what I mean? That was the, that like, was the breaker here. I th- already th- had that's it your in my tipping plums point, for it. You know? I heard him cry. You know, sound like a little girl. He was uh, he was you know, very emotional. Because Dory Al Green Beckham wasn't crying when he got drafted. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, well, exactly. Like DK was a top ten, a top fifteen pick for a long time, and even going into last year before he got hurt, it was like DK Metcalf's the best wide receiver prospect coming into the. He's going. He's the you know him. I don't he like was the belt there, that they wear. Over he there, was up but. there with Nikhil Harry. You know, it was DK Metcalf, and then he hurt his neck and he missed. You know, like every time when he he wasn't hurt. He was that top Debbie ranked wide receiver, and he's been number one 
we talk about that type of stuff all the time. Like he's been, you talk, you talk about Miles Sanders being the top recruited player. He's been good enough to bounce outside and win. He hasn't necessarily had to run up the middle too much and make it happen and learn some of those lanes and learn how to use some of his blocks because he can just get Zero, out of people's way. Zero slot reception. Now DK, DK goes into the second round, which is great for most of the people in this draft and great for all the people that got drafted in the third round. They would have loved to have been in a second into the second round, but this man had his hopes were up. His hopes got dashed. He cried. He's on the commercials. He's all, you know, like he, if anybody's going to work harder than they were going to work, it's probably DK Metcalf. So I can see all of the luster here. I can see the potential. I would probably play it a little bit different here, but I don't, I can't argue with the pick. It's just, it's not my taste. All right, we'll find out who you would have taken. We're going to take that over to Patreon. We're going to have a nice uh, recap session over there about any of the differences that we had throughout this uh, first round, and we're going to continue to do that through this mock it up. On, on one more uh, coach speak kind of note here. All right. He uh, he did go see Jerry Sullivan in the uh, through the winter months here who is – Kind of like the uh, the route running wide receiver guru. He's seventy four years old and did a lot of work with Anquan Bolden and Larry Fitzgerald and all those kind of guys. And uh, Pete Carroll was was you know really praising the work that he did there and and Took really shirt off. really did some uh, did some good things uh, in in that category. Um, so and if well if there's anyone that I want to listen to less about talk about a player, it's pretty much Pete Carroll, but. <laughs> You love you love to hear all the good stuff. Yeah, well, I mean that's an actual fact. He, right, he I'm not did saying do he didn't. That. I know. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that. He went to the camp. He went to the guy. I'm yeah. not saying he, he didn't. I, I, I more meant um, how so good they, he looked. He just in worked camp. on a lot of nuances and how to run routes and how to try to make every route kind of look the same when you're coming out of things and and just work on a lot of little little things uh, with DK and said said it went really well. So. Yeah, I think I think Calvin Johnson is this dude's ceiling. He's the closest whoa, spec- physical whoa, specimen that we've whoa, come to. Whoa, he's the closest physical specimen that we've had close to Calvin Johnson. And if this dude is is a humble kind of guy who wants to work hard, look out. And I'm not saying he's gonna be that guy, but I'll take a swing at one five. Calvin Johnson didn't run a three cone. He didn't run. He it already at all. knew what it was. Like DK Smart should not have ran the run. three cone. He he probably if he wouldn't have been, ran the three cone. Everyone might have been a first round. Everyone wouldn't be saying yeah. He nobody would be saying shit right now. Got to know not to run that thing. Well, yeah, we'll that learn was, from that. That was stupid. All right, yeah. the commissions in the year. We have more DK Metcalf breakdown, and we talked about why AJ Brown got targets and why the offense wasn't that great at Ole Miss when we broke around uh, broke down DK Metcalf. So if you want to, you can go check that out.